So my best advice for anyone trying to study for the MCATs is study early, study consistently, and do tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of practice exams. Because I think just because you know something doesn't mean you'll actually be able to retrieve it and think about it and regurgitate something during the actual exam. So definitely practice as many practice problems, as many practice uh, sets, exams, whatever you want as possible. Um, now the easiest form you get is probably if you do buy all these Princeton, Kaplan, Exam Cracker, whatever type books, you probably come with tons of questions. Do all of the questions um, because they're, they come in the book. They're great practice. Um, and that's what I did for about the first six months or so. During the last two months, I wanted to really sim stimulate, simulate, oh my god, I can't talk, simulate the, the conditions of the test. So I went and took real practice tests. And when I, want, when I mean real, I mean take them, first of all, online. Um, the real exam is on a computer. It's not on paper. There's the scrap paper, but there's no paper reading or paper answer writing involved. And for me, there's always a very big difference between circling an answer or bubbling on a uh, scan sheet versus grabbing a mouse and clicking on the answers. So definitely do it on a computer with a mouse, not a trackpad, with a mouse. Because I don't want you, you know, getting used to, you know, circling A, circling B. And then on the exam, you have all these buttons and you're not even used to it um, with a mouse. So yeah, so stimulate using a mouse simulate using real full tests. Um, there's about a 10 minute break in between each section. So when I take tests online, I give myself 10 minute breaks. So I'll work one hour, whoosh, break, one hour, whoosh, break, one hour, break. And I think, I do believe the, the order is physical sciences, so physics and chem, then verbal reasoning, and then biological sciences, so bio and orgo. Go in that order every time when you practice. Um, and some of these tests come like that. So the first service I used was the AAMC. Um, they offer practice tests online. They give you one free one, which is number three. And then each of those are about 30 bucks a pop. Trust me, those are more worth it than any class you could buy. Because they are literally real questions that were used in the past. And from actually taking the test, I can tell you that the format they used, the font, the way that the browser looks, the buttons, where they're placed, where the timer is, how the text like looks, everything is exactly like the real thing. So the more of those you take and the more comfortable you are with that format, that's going to translate completely to the real test. Um, they also score you on the same way, obviously they use the same questions, and they use the same scoring me mechanism on the real test. So however you do on the practice test, is probably how you'll do on the real test. I know when I started, I did pretty low, and like probably every two weeks during the last two months, I got slightly better, 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 better. And I think my max was one point higher than when I got on my real test, and my average was around, yeah, the average I got on the AAMC practice test was the actual score I got my real MCAT. So I think they're an incredibly good predictor of how well you'll do. So there's only 13 of those total, and at the end of, when I had about three weeks left, I actually took all of them. So I ended up using another service called the Gold Standard NCAT. I also have a link down below for that one. And that's a third party company who also makes practice tests for the MCAT. Now, these were not the same, as in the, the, full, the whole web format looks very different from actual the real test. And the questions kind of ask on the same things, but for me, I thought they were much, much harder, uh, which was good because it got me, it trained me to, to be used to these harder questions, so the MCAT seems much easier. Um, I think my average for those were about two or three points lower than what I actually did on my real MCATs. Um, so yeah, definitely take those as well. Uh, I think those are like cheaper than about 100 bucks for about, I think, 10 tests or so. So yeah, much cheaper than the AAMC, but do not, do not, do not skip out on the AAMC test because I think those are the most helpful thing there is. So once again, an overview of everything I would recommend. T study early, as in maybe not eight months like I did, but give yourself time, find time to study. Um, if you know you have an incredibly busy semester, 
don't take the MCATs right after that. Um, I know myself, I took the MCATs about a year earlier than what most people do because I felt that was the best time for me. I, the spring of my sophomore year, I had a really, or fairly easy semester. Um, I was taking five classes, two of them were pretty much jokes. I was taking physics, which helped me refresh for the MCATs. I was taking English class, helped me refresh. And the semester before, I took all my organic chemistry and my organic chemistry lab. So all that information was really fresh in my head. Um, I knew I was going to take a really tough course load in my junior year. So it made sense for me to have time during that spring to study. And in the summer, I worked full time. Um, so it was important that I find time to study. So as soon as I got off of work every day, probably go to the gym every other day for about an hour, come back, shower, eat. And then from 6 to about 10 every night, 4 hours, I would just do practice tests. So probably two, sec two three sections a day uh, along with some material review. That's worked for me. So whatever time works for you, whether it be during the semester, during a break, um, make sure you find time and make sure you're studying consistently, right? And second point is to take as many practice tests as you can. Uh, if I were to allocate how I would spend my money, I'd probably go, let's say, one-third on exam learning material and two-thirds on practice tests. Because for me, I found that just because you know what the topic is that they're asking, you know the information they're asking for, getting it into the A, B, C, D choices is a very much different process. Um, so just because you know what they're asking doesn't mean you can pick the right answer. So definitely do as many practice tests as you can, making sure you have that, that right mind state. Uh, for me, verbal reasoning was my weakest part. So I actually bought an entire book of just verbal reasoning questions. Um, just so I could, you know, kind of build up where I was weakest. Um, and that also goes into my next point, which is address your weaknesses. Take all the practice tests. See where your scores are. If you're incredibly good at verbal, don't worry about practicing verbal so much. Um, I think especially in med school commissions, they, admissions, sorry, oh my goodness, can't even speak. They look for a um, very balanced score. They work, look for very round, well-roundedness. So if I had, let's say, a 12 in biology and an 8 in verbal, it wouldn't make sense for me to try to get that 12 to a 15 because I'm good. I'd much rather get that 8 up. Get your weak, weak parts up um, and allocate your time efficiently. Don't, don't study what you already know. Study what you need work in.